Privet, everybody. With uh, Russia being in the news not lot the last couple of weeks, it made me think of like growing up in the 80s and it felt like every film was had a Russian as the bad guy or Russia as sort of one of the main central plot devices. So I've sorted out some of my favourite films where this was the case. So it's Soviet Russia versus the USA. What's special about these three films, and I'll go through them all individually in a second, uh, the bad guys are all named Ivan. So Ivan the Russian, very clever. Ivan Danko and Ivan Drago. That's very creative. The first one, this is uh, No Treat, No Surrender. What's amazing about this film though, it's such wish fulfillment that like, uh, bullies being picked on at school, and he goes to the grave of Bruce Lee, which is actually amazing, believe it or not, based in Seattle. And he prays for like the ghost of Bruce Lee come back and train him. And then for some reason, and this is how crazy the 80s were, and it's perfectly summed up by this poster, a guy standing by a Russian flag and a guy standing by the American flag. I still can't go over they changed that flag. It makes sense because you know they're no longer the Soviet Union, but that flag was so cool. But yeah, a, a, a kid getting picked on at school by bullies is suddenly intimidated by a Russian. No retreat, no surrender. This is a really obscure film. Now I just get into Rocky IV. £2.50 rental price. What does that get you nowadays? Uh, one thing I noticed about a lot of these films, especially sort of retroactively looking at it, but at the very end of the film, about halfway through, they actually sort of, I don't know if they, they would try and calm down the threat of war and stuff. But they ended up saying like, oh, Russia isn't that bad and Russian people are just the same body as everybody else, which they are. But uh, yeah, Rocky IV. Red Heat. This is one of my favourite cop films directed by Waterhill. And it's got uh, uh, James Belushi in as the, the other guy. One thing that uh, kind of always kind of makes me laugh about this film. I always think of K9 because it's like, I remember reading once in a magazine it said, um, He'd been, uh, you know, he'd got like a German Shepherd as his, as his other partner in K9, and then he's uh, got a Russian cop as his other partner in this one, and they kind of tried to make out they were the same and that. But uh, yeah, Russia, and because of films like this, since become a big fan of Russian stuff, but Red Heat by Walter Hill. Now, this is a film uh, from 1983, directed by a British guy, if we're going to be talking about countries, uh, uh, John Badham. But it was so far ahead of its time, it's got computers in it, using modems and sort of hacking. I think it's one of the first films that mentioned a firewall and stuff like that. But one thing that's truly mind-blowing about it was, uh, I've read recently, and it was, it was the same year as well, that there was almost a nuclear war, and it was like just stopped at the last minute, like America were having these war games, and somebody like, and they forgot to tell like Russia, and somebody clicked in at the last minute that it wasn't sort of really happening. But I can't believe that, like, War Games nearly actually came true. War Games, John Barden. My pancreas. Uh, this is actually a little bit more recent. It's after, actually, the Cold War finished. I'm trying to think of the dates for the Cold War. It might, it might have been 1949 to 1990. I'll we'll have to check that later. But this is Philip Nuisi's The Saint. And it's set all in and around Moscow and Oxford. What's the distance between those two places? And uh, got Elizabeth Shue looking all sexy and a super cool Volvo. The same. This is uh, the hunt for Red October. And I remember, like, this is like I got proper like sucked into the quote-unquote hype for this film. Not that it's a terrible film. If anything, it's really good. Uh, but I remember just at the time, because I was so stupid as a kid, it just felt really, really boring. And you know, because it's like Tom Clancy and it's this techno thriller and stuff like that. But um, yeah, really good film. It's got Eric Baldwin in and it's about him looking for a submarine. Remember the cool Spectrum game had a really good box with like a big bear on it and stuff like that. Here's, let's go for a long one. This is uh, one of my favourite films as a kid and I think, uh, listen at me, I think it's the reason I'm not racist, it's uh, Ruskies and it's about these uh, American kids that um, uh, find a downed Russian pilot and they sort of become friends with him and look after him and things like that and realise that everybody's the same and it's all uh, one big planet, and which it is and uh, yeah, 
the reason you shouldn't be a racist, folks, because of that film Ruskies. I think there's a film where it happens where some people look after a German pilot as well, but yeah, Ruskies. Ow, you're tearing and this is kind on. of, um, this is a bit of a wild card, really, but this is a film called Silent Voice, and I kind of love how sort of um, the casting in it is so out there. It's got Gregory Peck, Jamie Lee Curtis, and then this guy. Uh, it's kind of um, Superman 4, but without um, out Superman. I'll have to give this um, another go as well because it's like, um, yeah, it's got Jamie Lee Curtis in. And um, pack a pack here, keep it locked. Wow.